Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video. In this video we're going to be looking at Lee and Magna who are upcoming Legacy Ascendables. These characters were leaked quite a long time ago but we are going to finally get them as 6 stars. First up we're going to be looking at Telltale Lee and as you can see as a 5 star this is what he looked like. We're going to focus on the rush. It was 44 AP cost, deal 525% damage to one enemy all teammates get 40% attack for one turn. Now here's his six star version and I'll go over his stats first. This is stats without veteran rings. So his stats are gonna be slightly lower than what you were used to seeing. He has got 1,686 attack, 1,847 defense and 1,820 HP. His trait of course is gonna remain as strong. He is still seen as a tank and his adrenaline rush is now called elusive strike. It is a 76 AP cost rush. Deal 525 damage to one enemy still. This character gets elusive for three turns and all teammates get 40% attack, I believe it's going to be. I'm not sure how many turns it's going to be for, but even if it's just for the one turn that the five star had, that's not too bad because pretty much I see Lee being a shield to use on a, an attack team now. Obviously, shields are gonna fall off massively on defense teams just because they're going to be annihilated by S-class characters. Krista will take out Lee really quickly, but on an attack team, you can use his rush and then obviously shield him for the next two turns. Now he might die quite quickly, but he's not going to be giving away AP while he's got elusive. And the all teammates get 40% attack. You can just make him rush first and then the rest of your teammates get the boost. So if he's in a team with James, for instance, James with a 40% attack boost will absolutely destroy defense teams. Now his active skill is stun and it stunned two enemies for one turn. It has an initial cooldown of two, which is really nice, obviously. I much prefer the initial cooldown two of control. It is two enemies, but it is only for one turn. This means you can actually bypass a shield on attack again. I think this guy is being geared heavily towards being used on attack. Defense team shields right now within six stars, their time is pretty much gone. Even in the six star era, majority of people could bypass them. And I think we kind of needed this character to be released around when he was leaked to have any sort of usability on defense teams. Now he does obviously keep the specialist skill human shield, which I think a lot of people will obviously be happy about. But like I've already said, the stock of these sort of characters have come greatly down and getting legacy characters now are not going to have that much of an impact on gameplay for the majority of players. It'll be nice for newer players coming through and the fact that you can pick up Lee in the supply depot straight up as a six star and the same with Magna, that's really good for new players in terms of progression path, in terms of what they can aim for, what they can be told this is a good way to play, this is a good thing to get because these characters will help with world map, they will help with some roadmaps as well. Now, if we compare him to the character that I built, I would say it doesn't make too much difference between the two characters. I kind of built my character around him actually being used on a defense team. So when he rushed, he buffed attack still, just because obviously he would mainly have been used on Eric defense teams. Attack buffs on Eric teams were kind of missing. There was defense buffs everywhere. A lot of the blues had defense buffs. The up to three teammates gained 25% HP was just to boost defensive stats. But like I said, he's not used on a defensive team anymore, so it's not as important. The elusive on his real rush is nice, but most of the time he's rushing and not being able to defend until the opposite team has already rushed so i don't think it's gonna be that useful if i'm honest and again the active skill was more aimed towards him being a defense team character but i actually kind of like the second turn two character stun for one turn that his real character has got it brings a reasonable amount of usability on an attack team if you were planning to use a shield. But that's Lee as a six star, guys. And I know there's a lot of Lee Telltale fans out there. I'm a big Lee Telltale fan. I'm going to ascend this guy regardless, even though I don't think I'll use him that much. But I might use him on the world map. I'll use him in SR and stuff. And I just like to get my Telltale characters to the highest star rating that I can. I've got characters at six star with, in Telltale that I'd never really use just because I, I just like to have them. And Lee's going to fit right in with the rest of those characters pretty much. Next up is Magna, and this is the original five-star character. We're going to look at the AR, and it's called Tip the Scales. It has a 45 AP cost, impair and minus 60% defense to up to three enemies for one turn. All teammates get 60% attack for one turn. Now we move across to her six-star version. We'll go over her stats first. 1,655 attack, 1,923 defense, and 1,762 HP. So you'd probably prefer the stat balance to be more towards the defensive stat. Same with Lee. They've overdone the attack here, especially considering these characters are not got great usability in the S-Class era. I'm talking like 1,200 attack and just boost their defense and HP to like 2k. It's not going to make that big a difference, but it's going to have just a slight bit more usability. 
She is of course going to remain as an alert character. The role will still be tank. Now we'll go across to her adrenaline rush which is called Muzzling Shots. It has a 76 AP cost. Deal 300% damage to a line of enemies. Those enemies get impair and minus 40% defense for two turns. So it looks like the attack buff has been removed from her rush. It's now limited to a line of enemies rather than three random enemies. But the minus 40% defense is nice. Obviously, the character that gets hit is going to absolutely be destroyed. The fact that she's an alert character, she'll be able to work with Priya, she'll be able to work with Krista. She'll be able to work with, you know, any S-Class character pretty much as long as you can fit them into the same team. She doesn't even have to get leader bonus, but her rush is a bit slow if you don't have AP on attack leader bonus. I doubt you're going to use an AP on attack weapon with her, to be honest. And that's going to be a quite a big issue in terms of getting this rush off nice and quick but then again you could use ap on attack and only shield periodically like you could attack for the first couple of turns get her rush and then you decide you're going to shield for the rest of the match or you could try and catch people off on the first turn just to get a couple of stuns maybe even have an ap on defense weapon because she is going to take a lot of damage but you're probably going to have to make a specific stun gun for her if that was the case because i doubt too many people have got a stun gun with ap on defense this is one of the very few characters that could probably take advantage of it now the attack buff has been removed from her rush by the looks of things and moved on to her active and it has got an initial cooldown of two. All teammates get 40% attack for two turns. Now, I do like that it, she's got an attack buff on her active in terms of the second turn. She can get it up. If you've got certain very fast characters or you know, you've got a command, you can do this first and there's a big buff for your teammates. But it's made the rush worse. The defense down has been reduced from minus 60% to minus 40%. And obviously defenses are much higher than they were in the five star era. So it's going to be much less effective here. Now the impair obviously got increased on that rush. But overall I think Magna kind of didn't really improve as a six star in terms of what her rush capability is. If anything it got slightly worse. Which is really sad because I think out of the two characters she was seen as the rarer one. She was also seen as the better character and she has fallen off a little bit in terms of just how useful her rush is. I think she'll still have some synergy usage with certain characters, but I think a few people will be let down in terms of what her rush has become as a six star, especially considering how overtuned the majority of promo characters rushes are compared to Magna and how generally speaking useless long term generation two six stars are going to be. Magna's shelf life is going to be very, very small in terms of being a raid ready character. She will still be useful for world map and stuff, but you're probably going to auto the majority of that. Now, obviously, she keeps her specialist skill, which was a human shield. And like I said, you can sort of mix this up if you do decide to take on an attack team. You can decide to shield the first turn. Then you can decide to rush or get commanded or whatever because her rush isn't that bad. It isn't as good as the five star, but it still isn't that bad. It really just depends on whether you want to try and go for some control or if you want to go for some extra damage for your damage dealers. I still feel that the biggest issue with Magna is going to actually be getting that rush off just because it's so slow. I think both of these shields needed to kind of have a 66 AP rush just to make it so that you could use it a bit quicker. Maybe even a 58 AP rush because these are, like I said, mostly attack team shields and their rushes are not going to really make that big a difference. They're mainly support rushes rather than being actually like damage dealing nuke rushes and generally speaking those are the rushes that go off quite quick they are also both percentage damage which is pretty useless in the s class era coming from six stars especially characters which are going to be so heavily geared towards defense they should have maybe even just been bleed it would have been better if both characters just had like 300 bleed for three turns so that lacerator characters could be used with them and this is the magnet i messed around with when she was originally leaked she had impair and minus 50 percent defense to all enemies for one turn so it's pretty much the same as her five star rush it even had an 85 ar i increased the ar cost mainly again because i saw her being mainly used on a defense team so that you didn't want this to happen too quickly she also gave all teammates 50 percent attack so a slight boost just because i was compensating for the fact that it was now the six star era and also the recover from bleed now that was a kind of ahead of its time in terms of how much bleed is used now compared to how much it was used at the time now the active skill being ap gain and elusive i think i was kind of going for it potentially being a mini raven for a legacy character which we still haven't had anything that's powerful in terms of first turn actives i don't think there's been a single first turn active for a legacy character yet i could be wrong someone will have to correct me if i'm wrong here now neither characters have attached weapons so if you've got weapons made up you can start making weapons for them straight away 
but both characters are going to be available in the survival road depot and it's going to have special gear this gear is already available so you can start purchasing it now if you've got any of these items left over from when you've purchased it before it will still work as you can see from these screenshots a big shout out to nico in my discord for providing these screenshots we've got two multi-tool knives and four sleeping bags to go from tier one to tier two then we've got four multi-tool knives and eight sleeping bags to go from tier two to tier three and then to get your character up to tier four it's eight multi-tool knives and 12 sleeping bags in total you'll need 14 multi-tool knives and 24 sleeping bags to get these characters maxed out you can buy three knives at a time and i think you can also buy three sleeping bags at a time when they're in the sr depot the big bonus is the sr depot does reset every single day there are some changes coming to survival road with the update with lee and magna you could potentially get in your hands on a lot more markers in the future as well if you've managed to save up those pieces of gear as well you're going to kind of fortunate i have got quite a bit of stock of multi-tool knives the sleeping bags on the other hand i do not both these characters will be available in the sr depot as six stars they will be no doubt quite expensive because they're straight up six star claims but i think the majority of people will have quite a lot of markers saved up but if you have either of these characters as maxed out five stars you'll be instantly allowed to just ascend them in the ascendance tower but you'll still require this gear from the sr depot whether you buy them from there or not so that's lee and magna guys do tell me what you think about these two characters I think I'd probably ascend both of them just like I've said in the past. Legacy Ascendables are so few and far between and getting characters and having characters is always just nice. Even if they're not great and raid ready, it's nice to just be able to get your hands on a six star and that's kind of you know how the game is there are more important characters than others so if you are low on tokens i would say maybe magna is useful in certain attack teams just because of her defense down rush and if you have a stun gun that's pretty nice but you might want to hold off otherwise just because there are probably better characters that you can ascend but that is the end of my video guys do tell me what you think about these two characters thank you very much for tuning in and as always keep on surviving guys keep on surviving